Hi class, welcome to Math is Fun, Demental. Today we're going to talk about proving angles are congruent, just basic angle proofs. So here we're going to start with a, a vocab term, theorem. A theorem is a conjecture or a rule that we need to prove is true using deductive reasoning, so facts and logic. Um, we can prove that a theorem is true using any of the following. We can either use given information, definitions, properties, postulates, which are also rules, but postulates we don't have to prove before we can use them. We can also use previously proven theorems. So let's look at a few theorems here. We have the first one, the congruent supplements theorem. Sounds super complicated, but we can break it down and think, okay, congruent. We know congruent means that the measures are equal. Supplements, so supplements is like supplementary angles. So supplementary men means, of course, that they add to 180. So if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. If we have a diagram here, let's just say that this is angle one. And I have, um, let's see, angle two and angle three. So if we look, we have two angles. Let's say that angle one and angle two are supplementary. Oops, ran out of room here a little bit. All right, and then let's also say that angle one and angle three are supplementary. So if we look at those diagrams, if we put one and two together, looks like they're going to make 180 degrees. And if we put one and three together, they make 180 degrees. So now our rule, our theorem is saying that I have two different angles, angles two and angle three, that are both supplementary to the same angle. They're both supplementary to angle one. Then I can use this theorem to conclude that angle two has to be congruent to angle three. And we'll use our little three dots to represent then or therefore. All right, so similarly, we have the congruent complements theorem, which is the same thing, but for complementary angles. So let me just make this a little smaller here so that I can fit everything in. All right. I know it's going to get a little squished here. Okay. So for congruent complements theorem, we have if two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are also congruent. So I can do the same thing here. Angle one and angle two are complementary, which means that they add to 90 degrees instead of 180. And angle one and angle three are complementary. So if they're both angle two and three are both complementary to angle one, we can kind of take out that, that second, that matching angle and state, therefore, angle two is congruent to angle three. All right, moving along, we have the right angle congruence theorem, which simply states that all right angles are congruent. If I know that I have a right angle, and let's just call it angle one, <laughs> and I have another right angle, angle two, then I can state that angle one is congruent to angle two because all right angles all measure 90 degrees, and if they have the same measure, they're congruent. All right, linear pair postulate says if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So remember, a linear pair are two adjacent angles that form a straight line. So if I have angle one and angle two here that are is a linear pair, then I can say that they are supplementary. Angle one and angle two are supplementary. Or I could have said that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. We can state it either way. All right, and the last one, vertical angles theorem states that vertical angles are all congruent. So remember our vertical angles. We have, let's call it angle one, two, three, and four. So I have four different angles here, and I have two pairs of vertical angles. I have angle one is going to be congruent to angle four, and I have angle two is congruent to angle three. 
So that's what our vertical angles theorem does for us. It says if we have two vertical angles, then we can state that they're congruent. All right, let's look at a proof example. So here's a geometric proof of the vertical angles theorem. Now, sometimes in geometry, again, with theorems, we have to prove that they're true before we can use them. So here what we're going to do is we're going to be given this diagram, and we want to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, which is what the vertical angles theorem says. So we can't use vertical angles theorem in this proof because that's what we're trying to prove. We have to use other, uh, theor or, sorry, other definitions and properties and previously proven theorems and postulates to prove that the vertical angles theorem works. Then later down the road, we can use vertical angles theorem. All right, so let's start our proof. We always start with the given information. So first line is always going to be whatever we're given. So here it's that segment AB intersects segment CD at the point E. So, and then again, we have just the word given because we were given that information, we want it in our proof. Now, for our second step, we aren't given anything else. We need to look at our diagram and say, okay, I also have this angle three that they have on my diagram. Maybe I can use that to get around to what I need to prove. Now, proofs, again, are going to be a little bit of something that you're going to need to practice before they get a little easier. Um, but we can, what we can do is we can look back and say, okay, what other postulates or properties or theorems can we use in this sense? Well, if we look at angle 3 and angle 1, I have two linear pair angles. I have a linear pair. And I have my linear pair postulate that says that uh, if I have linear pair angles, they're going to be supplementary. Well, let's put that into our proof. It may help us, it may not, but it's always good to just kind of start writing information, whatever you can think of. So here, I'm going to use our linear pair postulate and state that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 is going to have to be 180 degrees linear pair postulate. Remember, postulates are rules that we can use without proving they're true first. So we can just assume that they're true and use them in our proof, which is nice. All right, well, let's see. Can we do that again and maybe use that three as a middleman to connect one and two? Well, if we look, three and two are also a linear pair. So I'm going to use the same thing, but with 2 and 3. Measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is 180 degrees for the same reason. Oops, let's make that a little neater here. Step 3 is going to be linear pair postulate again. All right, so now let's think about our properties that we learned in the last lesson. We had substitution property, transitive property, reflexive property, symmetric, addition, subtraction. We had all those properties that we can pull from for our next step. We want to get to angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Always go back to what you need to prove and keep that in mind. So here, I have angle 1 and angle 2, but I also have these angle 3s and these 180s I want to get rid of. So what we can do is well, I could use transitive property. If you don't see it, watch what I'm going to do on the side here just to kind of explain our transitive property again. If the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 and the measure of angle, ooh, you know what? I'm just going to switch it. I'm going to say and 180 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Then I can use my transitive train or my transitive property. Remember, 180s match so they can go in the same train car. We've got our train, and with our transitive property, we can get rid of that middle car. I can take the first car and set it equal to the last car with our transitive property. So that's what I'm going to use in this case. 
to get to the measure of angle 1 plus 3 equals the measure of angle 2 plus 3. That helps me get rid of at least one part. We get rid of the 180 degrees. Is. So let's see. We're going to make the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. All right, and let me make that a little smaller. All right. So I'm going to say that that's going to be our transitive prop property of, and then we look, did we use equal signs or congruent signs? Well, we're using equal signs, so we're going to make that property of equality. Now, again, we could have used substitution. Anytime we can use transitive, substitution also applies. But I like transitive property. I like to use it when it applies to the problem. All right. Step number five, we want to get rid of the measure of angle threes. Remember, our goal is to get one equal to two. So I need to get rid of the measure of those angle threes. And what I can do is I can subtract them from both sides of our equation. So I end up with the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two using our subtraction property of equality. So there's that. Now we're almost done. If we look at what we have, we have the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, which is so close. But if we want to look at what we want to prove, it's that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So we have one more step. We need to change that equals to congruence. And we can do that using the definition of congruent angles. So definition, I'm just going to abbreviate definition of congruent angles. So we can use a little bit of our symbols and math proofs. So it's nice that way to shorten it up. So definition of congruent angles just goes in between equality and congruence. And it goes the other direction, too, if you ever need to use it. All right, and that's the end of our proof. We started with our given. We ended with what we needed to prove. And we justified every step. So that concludes our lesson today. Thank you for watching. And remember, math is fundamental.